Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm glad to make a contribution to this debate. Um, safe and fair working conditions are one of the building blocks of the Australian way of life, and the existence and guarantee of those conditions are one of our core values uh, and our core operating principles. And that, that's not surprising, because without those conditions, working people and those who depend on them, which is the vast, vast, vast majority of Australians, are at risk. Their core well-being is at risk and their physical and material well-being is at risk. And this Labor government is going to do what Labor governments have always done. We're going to be the responsible stewards of that, uh, that building block of the Australian way of life, safe and fair working conditions, after a period uh, of 10 years when, when that task was uh, utterly abandoned by those opposite. And some of the things that have been said in this debate um, have just been utterly ridiculous on that front. Um, Deputy Speaker, I've often said that the most important things are the things we share. That, that's my view, the things that define our communal life out together, um, that define um, our values and the way that we, uh, that we go forward as a nation and we live in our communities right around this country. Um, if you think about what those things are, public health and education, our environment, community infrastructure, but fair and safe working conditions, fair and safe working conditions. Every Australian ought to be able to um, go throughout their life taking that as a bedrock guarantee of uh, life in this country. Uh, and when I have the privilege of participating in citizenship ceremonies uh, and I talk about what becoming an Australian citizen means and I say, you know, you're joining a, a country that is egalitarian and fair, uh, that is multicultural, uh, and democratic, um, I always make the point that all of the qualities that, that create our Australian way of life, uh, including safe and fair working conditions, didn't happen by accident. You know, those, those things that we enjoy today evolved over time and they were fought for over time. And in the case of fair and, and safe working conditions, they were fought for by workers and they were fought for by workers' representatives in the union movement, and they fought for by the Labor Party, um, and and the things that we enjoy today um, haven't been with us forever. I mean, it wasn't really that long ago uh, that we ended um, child labour. It wasn't that long ago that we made sure that sickness and annual leave entitlements were um, a a permanent and expected and reliable feature of working life. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we put in place effective occupational health and safety laws. And of course, the development evolution of effective occupational health and safety laws has been something that occurred over decades and, and needs to continue. It wasn't that long ago that there weren't awards uh, and penalty rates or superannuation or bargaining frameworks uh, with union membership rights, access and advocacy. All those things which we now take as being core to uh, the, the framework of fair and safe working conditions in Australia were fought for. Um, a hundred years ago, very few of those things existed. Um, so, when I go to citizenship ceremonies, one of the points I make in uh, lots of area, about lots of areas of life, but it's certainly relevant to this part of, of our life, is that we have to be the stewards of those values. We have to be the stewards of those conditions. Fair and safe working conditions were fought for to get them where they are, and they need to continue to be fought for. And we take that. Uh, stewardship responsibility seriously. Um, if you don't take that stewardship responsibility seriously, you will see an erosion in the degree of protection that is offered by the framework that uh, is there to guarantee fair and safe working conditions. Because things change, because times change. We're talking a lot at the moment about the gig economy. Um, when I was a kid, the challenges of the gig economy and the way that that puts people's um, pay at risk and puts their uh, not just their livelihood but their safety and their life at risk just didn't exist uh, in the way that it exists now. You know, the, the idea that you have people being seriously underpaid, taking jobs through a digital platform and being forced to rush from one thing to another on, on a bike delivering takeaway food um, and, and suffering, in some cases, unfortunately, fatal um, accidents as a result. You know, there have been stories in recent times of, of, of delivery drivers uh, uh, in, in ending up being being hurt in a in a, a motor vehicle accident and, uh, and 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 while they they die, continuing to receive um, delivery order messages 
on, on, on their telephones. This is, a, um, this is a feature of 21st century life, and if we don't change the, the framework uh, to protect those people, they will go unprotected. That's the way that it is now. Um, but it's also the case that, um, that loopholes in, in any framework will be exploited. Uh, the vast majority of businesses and employers in Australia do the right thing. There are some people and there are some um, organisations, consultants and peak bodies that um, unfortunately make it their business to look for loopholes where they can uh, take what is otherwise a fair share of profits and productivity and shift them from uh, the worker who's earned them to the, um, to the, the corporation, and to the CEOs. Um, that's something that has to be resisted. That's something we have to keep our eye on in every area of, of, of Australian life and certainly when it comes to uh, the framework that's supposed to protect uh, workers, and, we, and we're going to do that. Um, it was a task completely abandoned by those opposite for the last 10 years. And what did you see as a result? You saw stagnant and falling real wages. Uh, you saw a complete disconnection between productivity and profits. And you saw rising inequality. And that's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, if you don't tend to that framework that should guarantee to Australian workers and the people who depend on them fair and safe working conditions, uh, you will find that their share of the enterprises to which they contribute with, through their labour, their share uh, will diminish. Um, and it's funny that those opposite will, will talk about how um, wages uh, rising can't be, can't be tolerated, that it'll cause this, it'll cause that, you know, that this will go through the roof, that business will close down, building construction in Tasmania will stop altogether. I think the previous speaker said that it would decimate innovation and ingenuity, destroy the, the building industry, thousands of businesses will go. Uh, uh, will go out of business. Uh, I mean, you know, when all the catastrophising and the hysterical extreme uh, rhetoric dies away, what are they essentially saying? They're saying that people can't be paid properly. They're saying that workers can't be safe, that the whole show will, will crumble into dust if people get their fair share of the enterprise to which they contribute. I mean, how utterly, utterly ridiculous. What happened in 2022? Uh, we, we, we ensured that the minimum wage rose at a time of, of high inflation caused by global factors. That's so that the, all the cost of living pressures that the former um, speaker referred to actually don't hurt households um, to the extent that they otherwise would. You know, when you get wages that are at least keeping touch with inflation, uh, let alone staying connected to uh, record corporate pro profits and rising productivity, uh, what you are doing is you're making sure that Australian families and Australian households are not falling further behind. So we were prepared to support that rise to the minimum wage almost as soon as we were elected, uh, as the Prime Minister uh, made clear during the course of the campaign with the, the famous dollar coin, which those opposite thought would literally bring Armageddon to Australia. How utterly ridiculous. But, but just to make it more ridiculous, I mean, one thing you will never hear, so you hear all this catastrophising about wages and how dangerous it is that workers get paid properly, how dangerous it is that workers receive their fair share of the of the enterprises to which they contribute. You never hear, ever, ever hear uh, those opposite uh, saying a cautionary word about CEO wages. You know, that's not a problem. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the laws of, uh, of economic orthodoxy that, they, um, that, that they've imbibed, that they seek to apply, doesn't seem to, um, doesn't seem to have any application in the case of CEO wages. Last year, uh, ordinary wages across the Australian economy rose on average by 3.7 per cent, and that was apparently dangerous. Um, CEO wages, 15 per cent, five times as much. Did you ever hear anyone of those opposite say, well, hang on a second, that's a bit risky, that's a bit much, you know, that's a bit out of, out of kilter with the circumstances of the day, that's going to make your milk prices go up and your gas prices go up and the building industry close and thousands of businesses shut? No. No, there's no, never a problem with CEO wages going up or bonuses going up or share issues going up. That, that's fine. That's just the laws of the, of the jungle. That's a, healthy, uh, that's a healthy economy in practice. That's, that's people um, getting reward for effort, as the member for Fisher said. But uh, you know, God forbid that the people on the minimum wage should get their, uh, their pay rise. God forbid. That, that's, that'll you know, let loose the four horses of the apocalypse the very next day, ridden by um, you know, bikies from the CFMEU or some other kind of bizarre dark fantasy that those people, those people, those people should put some employment the way those people should put 
some employment the way of, of the, of the counselling and psychology sector and get some of those Order. weird fantasies attended to, Deputy Speaker. That's what they should do. That would help the economy. Go and, um, go and lie on the couch and confess to some of those bizarre visions and have, have them attended to. But we're, um, we're not going to go along with that. We're not, we're not going to go along with that. We, we know that fair and safe working conditions are a core value of uh, the Australian community, that Australians absolutely insist on, on the right uh, and, uh, and on the sort of inherent justice that is involved in workers being able to get a fair share of the outcomes of their efforts and to be able to go to work and come home safely and to be able to have the benefit of uh, evolving reforms uh, like we've done with 10 days of paid and domestic violence leave, uh, that have the benefit of a government that doesn't say, oh, look what happened with asbestos and asbestosis, let's let the next version of that creep up on us, uh, but instead will say, as this government is saying, no, we know that there's a problem with silica-related diseases and we are going to seriously get on the front foot about that before we see um, more people affected by something that uh, will we'll deliver onto them uh, acute and, 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 in some cases, grave health issues down the track. What we're going to do, you know, the kinds of things that um, those opposite somehow seem to regard as, um, I think the, the speaker before last or the one before that said, like the most extreme changes in the history of the world or something moderate and, and um, tempered, we, we're going to make sure that there is a, a fair and objective definition of, of casual employee. Shock horror. We're going to protect bargained wages in enterprise agreements from being undercut. You know, we think that uh, when people are, are working in the same job in the same place, that you shouldn't be able to um, surreptitiously or cunningly make use of a labour hire arrangement, not for a legitimate purpose, because there are legitimate purposes to which labour hire arrangements can be put, but to, to simply go and um, create a, um, a sort of an additional um, subsidiary and subordinate um, workforce with, with the purpose of undercutting the wages of people um, who are already there. We don't think that's okay. We don't think that's okay. And we're going to change it. Um, we don't think that um, wage theft should go unchecked in this country. We don't think that. I mean, you, pe people should should go back into their communities or even in their families, particularly with young people, but but not just young people. When you think that 40% of casual employees uh, are over 35, and just ask, you know, people that you know, do you reckon you've ever worked somewhere where you're not getting paid properly? where you know what the award is but you get a couple of dollars less or you know that there's a penalty rate but your employer just quietly says, well, yeah, but we don't pay that. Um, my kids have experienced it. Um, my mum's experienced it. My brother's experienced it. You, you ask around. You will, not, you, will have to, you will not find many people out of 10 who at some point haven't found that they've worked in a place that, that has decided to cut a corner and help themselves to, to some of the um, output of their worker in order to put a little bit more coin in their pocket. Well, we're, we're going to do something to turn the wheel um, on that issue. Uh, we're going to allow the, the Fair Work Commission to set fair minimum standards uh, with respect to road transport, the road transport industry, an industry that has, has been beset for understandable reasons with, with risks um, to those workers for too long because of the, of the nature of the work. So, um, we, we are doing what any responsible government would do. We start from the position that fair and safe working conditions are an entitlement of every Australian. They are a core value of our Australian way of life. Mm -hmm. They didn't happen by accident. We didn't end up where we are today with the existing framework by accident. We fought for it. The Labor movement fought for it. Unions fought for it. Workers fought for it. Uh, Labor governments answered those calls and implemented those changes and built that framework. But it is a dynamic living thing. It will always be subject to erosion. It will always be subject to the possibility that um, people will go and pay consultants to find loopholes and ways around mm. things out of their own self-interest and against the interests of workers. And it will always be subject to being less effective over time because the world changes, because things like the gig economy and Deliveroo and all that sort of stuff come along when perhaps 25 years ago they weren't anticipated. So we are doing uh, pretty smartly in our first term, off the back of the job summit, off the back of all of the consultation, off the back of all the clarity uh, in the lead up to the election about what our intentions were in this space, we are going to turn the wheel to make working conditions in Australia fairer and safer 
for Australian workers. That's what Australians deserve. That's what they insist upon. That's what they voted on. That's what the Albanese Labor government will be delivering. Yeah, yeah.